Hello everybody and thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to all my subscribers. Big thumbs up, thank you. Um, today we're going to repair one of these um, Saiski boards I've been using to fly micros. Um, so I uh, bought another frame, where'd that go? And this one is just a little tiny 80. In the picture it seems big, but it's actually very, very small. Here's a 120. Can't even hardly get that in the whole frame. And this is an 80. So this will be quite a bit smaller. Um, and this is an H frame. I wanted to try um, another style of frame. And uh, so I need a board to put in it. And the Saiski is the one I have been using a lot of. Uh, mainly because it's very economical and easy to get. Um, a lot of other people use different boards, but most of them, I think, are, are $20 or more expensive, so I've been using these boards. Unfortunately, um, the first time I built one, I didn't pay attention to my battery leads, and I plugged it in reverse polarity. So I blew the 5-volt regulator on it, which uh, hopefully you can see that. See if I can get that to focus. It's not focusing great. Um, let me point to it with this little yellow pen. Oh shoot, here we go. Okay, so right here, right against what I'm touching, is what blew. That should be yellow, like this one up here. So, obviously it blew its cap, and you can actually see it's melted down. Now, I did fly this for a little while, and it worked uh, okay. But uh, eventually what I found is that um, if you gave it much of a punch on full throttle, uh, it would do odd things. Uh, it just it didn't throttle up normally. And then eventually it just started uh, yawing uh, hard left all the time. So every time I'd fly it, it would just get up and start spinning around. Um, and you couldn't really even hold it with enough yaw uh, right to make it stick. So it was unflyable, so I bought new boards. So you can see I've already got solder on these. Uh, what we're going to do is called, well it's not officially named, but the idea is not my own. It came from the community over at Micromotor Warehouse and uh, it has been coined the LAS Bypass, L-A-S Bypass. And it's it's actually quite simple. Um, so we're going to attempt that here. The things that you'll need is a uh, 5 volt step up step down regulator. I've got one here from Pololu. Let me turn this right side up. It is the S7V7F5. They run uh, 495. Let's see if I can get that out real quick. And it's just a little tiny guy. Um, put that on my finger here and get you. So it's small. Uh, the Pololu regulators work very well. I haven't had troubles with any of them. And so we're going to use that. We won't be needing the pins. And then we're going to use a connector, which in this case, this is the uh, JST-SH 1mm 4-pin connector. Um, when you get them, they come like this. And uh, you have to uh, pull out the pins, and I'll show you how to do that. But you'll see that when we look at these two, that uh, I've changed the voltage and the uh, negative um, to the other side to match up what they are on this board. Because if you see there, our five volt and our ground is down here at this end. Or did I screw that up? Let me see. Um, this should plug in like this. Yeah, because otherwise they plug in just the opposite. Um, I was pretty sure I checked that, but um, so if I were to just leave these pins where they're at and plug them in, our 5 volt and our ground wouldn't line up. They need to be up here at the top. Okay? So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Hopefully my hands won't be too much in the way. Um, I just use a little X-Acto knife. And what you're going to do is you're just going to put the edge of your knife just underneath these tabs. And you're going to pull on the wire while you, I use my fingernail to pull against, kind of like if you're soldering, to increase some pressure. So the first thing you want to do is get it into there. And you try not to damage them because 
you don't want to you can just pluck them straight out so now you can see I've got it under there and I just slide it back and then when you go to put them back in you just make sure you shove them in the straight way I'll see if I can get that closer here um, there's a little uh, piece here at the top and you just want to make sure you just shove that straight back in and you should feel it click in when you do that so that's how you pull the wires out and get it back in so your connector straight and what we're going to do is we're going to solder from where we would put our battery leads and we'll put our battery leads on there as well and then we'll solder to the uh, the voltage in and the ground and then we'll use our excess wire from this connector to go from the voltage out and the ground and then we'll plug it in and we'll put a little bit of heat shrink around it to keep it from shorting because we do have um, connections here and we don't want them touching the board so we'll just uh, take our heat shrink hopefully I'll get the right size if not I'll get a different one we'll put that around it and um, secure it down using a little bit of hot glue or something so that's what we're gonna do and we'll go uh, step by step here I'm not going to show you the soldering because it's it's you know so tiny that you, I can't hardly get a camera shot in there so I'll solder each piece up and then we'll come back step by step okay the first thing we need to do is we need to get our wire length so I'm gonna plug this in get our antenna up here out of the way and we're going to bend this around so we can get an idea of how much wire we're going to need in order to be able to solder it down to our, our 5 volt regulator. So I think if I cut it here I'll have plenty on both sides. So I'm just going to cut those off. Stripping these is kind of tedious with my wires aren't straight let's leave those crooked though you just don't want very much you don't put very much pressure and if you can see there just strip off a little tiny bit you don't need a lot we got some tear off over there uh, you can use um, a sharp edge and just kind of roll it um, that works better in my opinion with silicone wire um, which is a lot more flexible but you would just roll the wire as you uh, kind of cut your end off that gives you a real nice clean end so do this one as well. Sorry, I know I'm shaking the camera and you twist. Twisting these is, uh, you always kind of wonder, do you actually have a hold of it or not? But give it some tent, some spins. Keep all those threads together. Okay, so now we need to look at how much length of wire we need. Sorry, I'm trying to do this and keep light on everything. I don't have a very fancy lighting studio, that's for sure. Just a couple of desk lamps. Um, so we don't need a whole lot. So we're going to go from... We're going to go from there. Straighten these up. We're going to go from there. And we're going to go about up to the top. I think this length should work out we should be able to make that work and if we don't if it turns out too much too short we've got another length here that's a little bit longer strip these normally when you're soldering you want to tin everything first um, which I don't disagree with but what I find with these tiny little wires and I'm not even sure what gauge wires these are um, they gotta be somewhere in the high 20s if not 30s um, if I tin these the heat um, either I am using too much heat or the insulation just isn't robust enough it'll actually the insulation will start to melt back so you end up with more exposed wire than you need um, and it's it's kinda unavoidable um, at least in my opinion, maybe I, I'm just, again, maybe I'm running it too hot, but I've been able to make it work, and I tend to insulate all my solder joints with hot glue as well. Okay, so that's set up. Let's see. That's really it. I'm, uh, at the same time, going to put on a power lead 
for this uh, new board. I'm going to put on a shorter one, I think. And I'm using JSTs now because what I found with our newer bat with the batteries I'm now using is that they all have JST leads on them. And I'm also using a thicker gauge wire. I'm using an 18 gauge wire, which makes putting these JSTs uh, connectors together a challenge, but it can be done with a little bit of patience. You can see I've actually burned that wire a little bit. But the theory behind that is, and I don't know if it actually applies to these size keyboards, but um, according to Benedict over at Micromotor Warehouse, he's the owner, he's the, the man who made the uh, Dark Edition motors famous, um, you need 3.3 um, uh, amps to run 8 millimeter motors um, efficiently or well. Maybe that's to probably to get top end. Um, and if you look at these standards for wiring, so if you put 3.3 times 4, then you end up with uh, over 12 amps. And if you look at the wiring standard for uh, 20 or 22 gauge wire, which a lot of um, the uh, standard micro Lozi leads that you get come with, um, they can't. They can only carry 10. Um, so you don't actually have the ability to put full power. Now again, a limiting factor could be the wiring on your battery or it could be the board itself and how much it allows through but um, I also find that these are easier to connect and disconnect so I bought a uh, PA09 crimper and some um, ends and pens from uh, Sammy Lamb on eBay okay so back to the the last bypass here uh, I'm gonna solder these things up and then we'll come back and take a look okay so I've got the 5 volt regulator um, soldered up. This of course goes into our board. Uh, whenever you have two wires, if you've got a hole, if you can do them both at the same time, that tends to make things easier. Doing one and then the other, you tend to get this situation where you, the one you had, then comes loose and falls out. So if you can do them both at the same time, that's probably going to be the easiest. Um, and then these two leads will go to our board. I've got the uh, battery leads. This will be uh, fidgety because uh, getting these soldered and keeping those others on will be a little bit of a problem. But I wanted to get the battery leads on first to make sure their connection was the best. Because without the battery leads being connected well, um, the 5 volt regulator doesn't have anything to do anyways. Um, Okay, so I'm going to solder this to the board and then we'll be okay, just... Okay, so it. we've got um, everything soldered up here. I've got the hot glue gun warming up and I'll put some hot glue on the connections back side here on top of my leads here and then I will get some heat shrink this size which I believe is quarter inch heat shrink is too small so I'm going to find a bigger piece that I can get over there and when the hot glue gun is warm we'll do that these are my little helping hands or needle nose with a rubber band um, it just helps to stabilize these little tiny pieces. Um, some people have those uh, soldering stands that have multiple alligator clips that you can hold all the pieces and those are pretty handy. Um, I've actually got one but it just doesn't work very well. It, by the time I end up fiddling with it so much I could be done um, and the magnifying glass on mine is all cloudy. I don't know what happened to it. but So I just use the simple old needle nose with a rubber band on it and these are probably three bucks from hardware store the cheapest ones I could find hot glue guns ready let's do it so I don't want to get any on the leads over here and actually if you were building um, I should probably hold off because I will be putting sockets on here uh, in another video I'll be showing a, a build um, so I'm gonna not put any hot glue on the battery leads right now I am just gonna do it on the back of this board and you just squeeze a liberal amount on there. You just want to insulate it a bit and also help strengthen the connection if it actually gets pulled on in any way that it won't uh, pull off the board. Didn't take a lot. I did find some heat shrink. Uh, it's huge, but I did find that it will shrink down far enough. This is Turnigy branded. I don't even know what size it is. Um, if you want to know this is the label on the package that might help you find it it's from uh, Hobby King um, and it does shrink down far enough to um, secure itself over the top of our little 5 volt regulator okay so we've got everything secured um, I should have started with one thing that I forgot to do is we actually need to remove 
um, this piece right here. Um, and in the instructions, they said you could crush it or remove it. Um, I'm actually going to remove it. And, oops, sorry, that was out of frame. So this round piece right here is what we need to remove. You would think we need to remove that, but we're actually bypassing all of this right here. Um, so this round piece here is what we need to remove. And uh, we do that, and then we're finished up. Um, I used a little bit of hot glue here along the uh, front edge to keep the... Um, uh, regulator in place so it won't wobble around it's in pretty good shape we've got um, our connections here um, I'll actually to the bottom need to add uh, something like this to go to the uh, FPV system but we'll do that uh, when we get closer to the, the build of that uh, little 80 frame uh, so I'm gonna take this little bit off here and uh, we can talk about that after it's done. Okay, so I've removed that piece and that finalizes our build phase. So you can see now um, that piece is now gone and uh, it's laying here on the desk. Um, and it's not soldered on heavy by any stretch as you can imagine, it's so small. But what I did was I just started from the outside edge with my iron. I just started it along here and uh, warming up this soldering here. And as I saw it started to liquefy, then I would take my soldering iron and just kind of rub up on it. And then it real easily, the edge came up. And then I just used my needle nose to get a hold of it. And then I pulled it off of there. Um, I pulled it with a twist to make sure I didn't pull anything off the board. It would just pull the uh, solder apart. So there we have it. We have it now what should be a fully working board and I can move forward with my uh, little 80 micro frame build. If you have any questions about this, I'll put a link to the um, uh, uh, posting on the Micromoto Warehouse uh, community. Um, Chris Doe put the steps together that I followed and last was the um, brains behind the idea. Um, so full credit to them. Um, if you don't visit the Micromotor Warehouse uh, community and you don't follow the Micromotor Warehouse on YouTube, I would suggest you do so. Lots of really good information there, especially when it comes to micros because that's really what, he's, uh, what Benedict specializes in. Um, you can also find places to get sources for parts. Um, there's a lot of people working on the new open source alien flight board and maybe uh, bringing that back to life. Um, so a lot of good information there uh, and many of the people in the Micromotor Warehouse community also participate over at the RC groups but I think they're they're really heavily active over at the uh, community for the Micromotor Warehouse. Uh, if you have any questions about this or if you have any questions in general about any of the videos please leave those in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Um, if I've uh, made a correction or I need to make a correction here, please let me know so I can pass that information along. Um, the next phase, if you're interested, and I actually had intended to do a build video with one of those micros, but I lost some footage, so we ended up not having that. This time, I actually plan to have some build video. So if you're interested in looking at how I'm going to put it together, um, if you're interested in building one of your own, you might want to look at this video coming up. All right. Uh, that signs it up for today. I'm going to get on with building that 80 millimeter frame.